Mickey Hayden is one of the world's fastest men on two wheels. Wearing the number 69, the Kentucky Kid has won championships at nearly every level on the way up, including the pinnacle of the sport, MotoGP. This year, he's moving on to World Superbike, where he's going to be racing a production-based Honda CBR 1000 against some of the world's best. In some ways, it's like a return to the beginning of his career, where he was racing real bikes, real fast. To take a look at some of the iconic motorcycles that have defined his career, American Honda's opened the door to their private collection, and we've booked a little track time with Mr. Hayden himself. All right, we've got Nicky Hayden on the pit wall. That's right. And a couple of pretty good looking bikes back there behind us. Now, you were telling me earlier, that's the Honda RC45. You were riding that in, in high school, is that right? Yeah, it's the first ever super bike I ever ridden. I uh, remember riding that for the first time at Willow Springs. I remember rolling out onto the track and just feeling the power uh -huh. and how smooth it went through the gear. So, uh, yeah, a few, few things have changed since then, but uh, that was a great experience for me. This is a 1994 Honda RC45, also known as the RVF 750. The 750 is the displacement of the engine, a 750cc V4. This bike was meant to go racing, and indeed Honda only ever sold 200 of the things, just enough to qualify for production-based superbike competitions. Only 50 RC45s came to the US, and this is one of them, a bike that spends most of its time locked away in the American Honda Museum. A bike like this would make for Nicky Hayden's first entry into professional superbike racing. Yeah, it was a good period for me. It was my first year with Honda, and that was a good opportunity. Won the American, the 600 Super Sport title that year on 600, and uh, was the beginning of something special for me. And it still looks fantastic. I love the twin headlights. I think that is such an iconic look. I kind of miss it, to be honest with you. Within the domestic AMA series, it's not unusual for riders to race in both the Superbike and the slightly slower Supersport series, meaning multiple races per weekend. On a CBR 600, Nicky Hayden won his first AMA championship in 1999, and this is the bike he rode in 2000, which still bears his number one championship winning plate. Nicky would continue racing in AMA through the new millennium, and this would be his new Superbike. This is a production version of Nikki's RC51, a 999cc V-twin. Bigger and more powerful than the RC45 it replaced, on a bike very much like this one, he would win the 2002 AMA Superbike Championship and be propelled onto the international stage with a MotoGP ride starting in 2003. Nikki would spend most of his MotoGP career riding some variation of this bike, a Honda RC211V. A prototype machine is custom built for racing from the ground up and is powered by a 990cc V5. The bike weighs just 326 pounds, that's 100 less than a road going superbike, it makes somewhere around 250 horsepower. It's quite a ride, a ride that would carry Nicky to his MotoGP championship in 2006. Yeah, I did uh, 13 years in MotoGP, um, you know, got the title I really wanted and had a lot of, obviously, title everybody wants. yeah, some good days. Very thankful for the opportunity. Was an amazing experience to ride those bikes on those tracks in front of those crowds. And, uh, you know, I got now an opportunity to move to World Superbike. I'm 34 now, and I'm very happy to keep racing and get this opportunity. And, uh, yeah, it's, you know, after a while, I think a change is good. And to be back with this team and everything, I got a, uh, I got a good fresh start, so looking forward to try to have some fun. I always have been a fan of Superbikes. Ultimate goal would be to try to win the World Superbike Championship with Honda as well and uh, be the first rider to ever have both crowns. As Nicky moves on to World Superbike racing, he'll be riding a machine much like this. It's a box fresh CBR 1000 RR, showing two decades worth of advancement over that earlier RC45. Despite only having a 250cc advantage over that older bike, it makes around 175 horsepower. That's nearly twice as much as an early 90s superbike. But it also adds modern suspension and lots of other niceties you didn't get back in the 90s. Though you can't deny the RC45 had a better paint job, and those twin headlights are nothing short of iconic. So we got 20 years worth of superbike progress sitting behind us. Obviously, a lot of changes between the two V4 versus an inline four. A lot more po horsepower in the new bike. I think 75 more horsepower, something like that. Honda won't tell us for sure, but I think it's something like that. What do you think is the biggest change other than the engine between these two? Suspension? Is it setup? Body well, work, I mean, just sitting on it, you already feel the position is more racy. 
a little bit more like full race bike where that one kind of feels like a street bike where that one feel, I mean the, the ride position is very similar to my CBR. On the new bike? Yeah, on the new one. I would say that and, and the weight, you know, is a, is a big thing and how narrow it is. But it's cool to see. I mean, you know, you can just sit there and, and step back and see how far the technologies came and all the little refinements. So it's cool. Climbing on the back of a bike like this, especially after watching someone like Nikki flying around the track, you really appreciate just how good these guys are. It's a bike that wants to throw its front wheel in the sky with every twist of the throttle and spin the rear tire up coming out of every turn. Getting the most out of a bike like this takes incredible skill and confidence. What's the difference between that guy and the bike that you're going to be racing on this season? Well, I mean, my bike, that's the base. You know, they, as you say, they take a production bike and a lot of the rules have to stay the same, obviously with the frames and different things, but they can modify it. Obviously the suspension can be modified, but you know, you can't change a lot of stuff. Yeah, the engine can be uh, hopped up with different, I think, believe it's pistons and different things and the electronics, mm -hmm. you know, we, we can work a lot with those and uh, adjustment, but the bike must be, uh, as you say, production, and any part we use can't be prototype. You, you have to be able to buy, buy it, and there's even a price cap on it, so it keeps it fair for some of the teams that they can't go out and buy, you know, $200,000 uh, suspension setting that, you know, nobody else in the paddock can afford, so uh, I kind of like that part of it, you know, in MotoGP in the last years, the difference between the factories and the supported teams got so big that was uh, took a little fun out of it. So in Superbike, they're closing that gap. Well, Nikki, it's been a great privilege hanging out with you at the track. I wish you the best of luck this year. I hope you have a lot of great success, and I hope you have a lot of fun out there on the track, too. All right. Well, thanks for having me out here. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to a new season. You know, like I say, very fortunate to, to keep going. I'm ready. I, you know, I still like racing. I still have a lot of support, especially here in America. And, uh, yeah, let's go uh, have some fun. In a lot of ways, World Superbikes is a purer form of motorsport. It's certainly a lot closer to the bikes that you and I can buy, anyway. And if Nicky plays his cards right this season, he could become the first man to win both the MotoGP and the World Superbike Championships. And I, for one, wouldn't bet against him. <laughs>